table room. Beat down brown. Eddie P. Dirty. 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 They never lose their cool. Expand your mind. But I've got a better source of information. Dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dirty 30 in the house. Episode 42 in the piece with my homeboy, Steady E. I am your boy, B. Don Brown. And uh, yeah, let's get it. All right, man. Uh, this one, I need you, need you to assist on this one because I know you, <clears throat> your ear is a lot stronger than mine. And when it comes to the the realm of different genres yeah. of music or whatever, so uh, this South by Southwest controversy with the with the governor, uh, or is it the who is that the governor or the mayor? Okay, so here's what's going on with it: South by Southwest. Um, big independent festival. Well, it's actually conferences and festivals. Shout out to my homeboy Keenan. Um, hit me to the fact I never I've been to one. Okay. See, this is why I knew your ass was down at that damn thing. I knew it. Go yeah, ahead. I, I've been I've been to one, and the crew was actually supposed to go to a couple okay. of them. Um, huge festival, but it's also educational stuff going on, okay. networking, all types of stuff. It, I only knew about like basically three days of the festival. That's what I went down for when I went down. Okay. Um, did not know about the whole other side of it. And it's just, once again, as we said in the last episode, that was the internet era, but that was early internet era. And also, let's be honest, Brothers Budgets wasn't crazy you know what <laughs> right I'm saying? we we right had on. we had i jobs but we didn't have grown man jobs that part and <clears throat> also having jobs you got to show back up at them so popping out <laughs> being gone for you know what i'm saying a week two weeks time about, yeah i'm about to get my music on yeah yeah that, 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 wasn't, yeah. that, wasn't, happening. that wasn't happening yeah <laughs> but um with this being the case it's a huge festival um you go through with networking for i'm finding out now literally for education Hmm. and educators um getting in routes into the music game learn about how to network and promote your projects getting exposure whether you're playing on some of the smaller stage some of the varied venues around there sometimes as i learned it was cool just to get into the parties okay. you know what i'm saying surrounding it it's like all-star weekend for independent musicians with a splash of label acts mixed in it's a very accessible kind of coachella thing in austin that likes to keep it weird and progressive so the one thing why everybody flips to it is austin as far as texas goes is very much different than the rest of texas for the fact of yes it's a more suburbanite area but it prides itself on being like I said, weird, progressive, kind of like a almost hippie-esque, a gotcha. little bit, very earthy as compared to being more so ranchers in good old fundamentalist values gotcha. with the rest of Texas. So when these bands, my first thing off top, because these festivals are going the way of the dinosaur here and there. And... um my first thing when you brought the article to me about these bands boycotting South by Southwest, I was a little bit pissy, like, y'all gonna fuck around and fuck up y'all good thing, because there's not too many things that are strictly geared towards the underground. We Coming from a hip-hop aspect, we lost PMC, we lost Jack the Rapper, and all that type of stuff that used to do the same thing. Um, the hip-hop expo like that is not the same as what it used to be. All this stuff that used to be like, oh, yeah, I'm an independent cat from Ohio, from upstate New York or whatever. And I get to rub elbows with Luke, Biggie, and, you know what I'm saying, Rockefeller and all like that. I was that was what that was. Yeah, now, I, I, I said it to you because I was confused, man, about 
why they're pulling out because of the sponsorships. I was like, man, that's these damn festivals are all sponsored by somebody you may or may not like. And they tripping off it's, because it was sponsored by the army. So here's what's going on now with dealing with something this independent, you're dealing with bands going back to our rage against the machine thing back gotcha. before you have bands that are very politically charged okay very much and also remember these are international bands so yeah. this isn't just stateside bands going to this you have people one of the bands was from romania okay. um that was pulling out another one was um a band that did have middle eastern members in the band okay and so these are people that directly don't like the fact of what the big issue is talking around kind of explaining to those who don't know what south by southwest is um the big controversy right now is one of the major sponsors going right now is the u.s army and um with that being the case the army is of course put, poking their nose in everywhere besides football right now because they're down on recruits military is not getting people in like they were getting people in before and they need to put their faces out wherever they can get people gotcha current standpoint of what's going on over in palestine right now people aren't digging the army and so a lot of these bands is like okay you know what Fuck the festival y'all got them but i mean like you said, there's problematic sponsors. If you go and look down that list, <laughs> you're going to find somebody who's on a list that you don't like. That's how I was like, y'all fucking, as to your point, th this thing going to go away like the dinosaurs. It's going to, you keep messing around and boycotting and all of a sudden everybody start, all these sponsors you don't like or whatever, and that's funding this shit from top to bottom. It pulls out. There is no South by Southwest. Right. You know, and they, what I looked at is they were not to. I'm not going to dis. I'm not going to dismiss anybody's protest, mm -hmm. but to a grand scheme of things, these were dropping the bucket acts okay. as far as it goes. And the one thing about how wild South by Southwest is, aka musical freak me, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all about the side party. So the fact of having a protest show protesting the show while the show is going on that's kind of the most south by southwest thing that you could possibly do Got it. um because um i shot out another pod um when the blogs the blog era pod that pharrell and all them were a part of bringing um out when they're talking about all the big fresh hip-hop um blogs that went and kind of took over south by southwest and through big major events they started off by south side parties nice so your side party can now kind of overtake the festival so yeah. it's once again it's all one big cycle we okay. keep saying that everything is cyclical it is you know what i'm saying whether is you know the brothers on deeper dives talking about it how things going going these cycles whether it's us looking at it from the music and culture aspect and things going back to what it was and you know what i'm saying whether it's you brothers when y'all sitting up there on 3 pmd talking about how you know stuff is looking like the 60s again as far as the way these police are stormtrooping and everything everything goes in these cycles right and going in these cycles you have the fact that new genres take over um we hopped out of the festival only to go back in the festival and we also removed this sponsor on it the one thing i look at it is we know the fact that the government literally prints money mm -hmm. if i'm going for exposure and a government agency is in there big up in my festival yeah, I don't have to like what y'all doing, but I can use that to mm -hmm. get my message out there. Mm -hmm. I can make a better protest on your stage. Yeah, because kind of like just... when when L flipped, you know, did that uh, free plug for Fubu on that Gap ad. Mm -hmm. You know, when they were like, oh, I mean, they all clapping at the end, which is so hilarious. Because they, they didn't understand what he just did, but they thought it was some slick shit. Like, oh man, that hip hop, I loved it, which was one of the all time greatest until somebody, I don't know who dropped two nickels and was like, do y'all know what he said? 
<laughs> during the ad that y'all paid for the the multiple million dollars y'all put up shooting this damn gap video. Y'all, y'all he got the hat him. on. He got the hat on, and he gave the plug. <laughs> like he had that the was hat. the slickest shit ever, and it was like that bastard got us. He got us. We he he got us to pay him to promote his own brand. Got it. Okay. Got it. He got us. He got us. And that's I, that what popped in my head when you said that using their funds to to do your thing. Like, yeah, man, get get on that platform, man. That's a huge ass platform. Use it and still do your thing. And like you said, the the most South by Southwest thing would to do a protest during the goddamn concert. Yeah. Yeah. Sponsored by the it. army, you know. Yeah. I'm gonna make y'all pay so I could talk shit about y'all. That part. That part. Yeah. Secure, se- secure your bag and have the maximum amount of eyes because exactly. they live they live cast the festival. I, it's probably still going on right now, but they live cast it on YouTube. They stream it on Spotify. It's it's you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? You can't right. do you can't hit all these platforms and have all those eyes on you independently. But you could go up there and let them put the bag out. That look at your look at your forefathers. Look at Rage Against the Machine. Um, there's one band out of Detroit, and it's going one rock band out of Detroit. It's going to piss me off because I can't come up. They literally played the Republican National Con- Convention while making protest songs, and it wound Dope. up being a riot. Dope. But um, they played that event. And it's just- like. It's it's a head scratcher, fam. It's now you got this little tagline saying such and such dropped out of South by Southwest instead of saying dropped out, such and such showed out. They did this song. They did. I mean, free, free plugs, man. Free plugs all day long. Y'all could have been up there tearing the shit up, and y'all messing up. You know, y'all and, y'all exposure. And you got every vlogger, every writer, and everybody sitting there is like, yo. I didn't even know about this band from until yeah. But, <laughs> let's be honest, West Bubblefuck. Right. But they sat up there and they did a protest song and it yeah. was crazy and it was yeah. rocking and the crowd's energy was this and this and that. They're not paying attention to you and they up there looking at the fact I won't say they're not paying attention to you. What I'm saying is the amount of eyes on you at your little we don't like y'all show because it wasn't mm-hmm. the fact that they told y'all to step down. Because I was looking for it, like, okay, right. did they tell y'all to step down? Not or at all. Did you did you show out? Come on, man. Andre three thousand showed you. Throw on a jumpsuit with your message on the jumpsuit right there, <laughs> and do and, your thing. And do and your thing. Get your check. Get your free uh, plug, and just keep it pushing. That's why I, was, I had to throw it to you because I knew you had more understanding about this whole South by Southwest issue. And I was like, how did they fumble so bad? Like, how do you not see this? We the old heads. Yeah. You know what I mean? We sitting back like, damn, they fumbled, you know, on the one yard line. How did y'all do that? Like you said, they didn't even get banned or anything, told them to stand down. They just, you know, they fumbled on their own. Nobody even touched them. Like, how did you drop the ball? Nobody even touched you. But Yeah. And. I'm one that's always about you can give me a million people that could care less about me or I'll rather rock with a thousand people that mess with me heavy. But at the same time, you could find another thousand sitting up there amongst that a million, Mm -hmm. whether it's at home Mm -hmm. and however many people are there Mm -hmm. that can hear about you there. And yeah, they got their pub because I looked at what was it like about 10 bands I never heard of. And I started scraping their music. I didn't really get a chance to go through it, go through it, but I started scraping their music to hear what's popping with them. But dog, I think hitting the stage changed. Bigger splash could have made a way way bigger splash and just dropping out. Yeah. I'm and I'm all about that splash, but you know, shout out to them. Stand behind, yeah. stand convicted in you. You know what I'm saying? What you want, but we just giving a <laughs> little bit of, you know what I'm saying? Armchair A and R for y'all. Just a little bit. Just, just a little bit, man. Just sit next there time. in the sit there in the festival. <laughs> this isn't Coachella. Coachella might have pulled y'all off stage. You right. know what I'm saying? Governor's ball might have t- might have pulled y'all mics. 
South by Southwest wasn't going to turn your sound off. They was going to let you say whatever you wanted and do your thing, no matter who the sponsor was. The Army would have been pissed about it later. Now, the only person looking good in this is uh, Governor Greg Abbott. Yeah, yeah, talking God. all that shit, talking shit. about, yeah, F you guys, don't, 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 yeah, and, don't now y'all, and now y'all mad, and now y'all mad, talking about, oh, we'll never go back to Texas. Because y'all did, y'all decided to, you know, to take y'all ball and go home? Yeah. Ah, it's, whatever, man. Okay. It, it's, it does, it doesn't prove it. Look at, let's go there for one hot second and we can step out of it. Look right. at the civil rights movement. The civil rights movement was all about, we are going to have our faces shown where they don't want us. Want us. That's it. Where that's they it. don't want us, that's exactly where we're going to be. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have to see us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to have to see us. Make them where they have to see you. That's all. <laughs> that's that's all. I, I, I said what I had to say. <laughs> all right, OG. Now, on a happier <laughs> note, on something yes. that is near <laughs> and dear to my heart, man. Something <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. First of all, as we always have to say before it goes to the into this rest in peace dove rest in peace yes. true goy Dave. you Dave. know what i'm saying it's 35th anniversary of three feet high and rising man yeah how about that 35 years ago 35 dog. Dog. when this dropped where were you at when this album dropped i I can't tell you where I was when the album dropped, but I can give you a quick story about getting my head blown off. <laughs> I, being a okay, love hip hop, love rap. Uh-huh. You had Run DMC, you had Big Daddy Kane, you had the Juice Crew, you had um, I want to say Eva Slick Rick was around, and you had Dougie Fresh. All these cats were the epitome of cool rock him and uh Eric B. The the epitome of cool, the epitome of hardcore, the epitome of just New York griminess, the dope yes. boy culture, all yes. that was there being fresh to death. Keep so going. me being a little nerdy alternative alternative bookworm kid from Ohio <laughs> was sitting in freaking was sitting in Harlem at my cousin's crib okay. and remember i didn't have cable okay and all of a sudden these three dudes in a classroom, classroom. in a classroom go ahead came up and the basic knotty, knotty head and you know what i'm saying day glow colors looking like me yeah getting clowned in their own video because they look like me and they was their studious big word cats yes it was like wait a minute I'm on the screen. Everybody talking about tribe. representation. Yeah. I found my tribe. That's my yeah. tribe. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like, left my wallet in El Segundo had already been out, but that yes. was still some fantastical stuff. You know, these cats yes. riding around in Mexico or whatever. Yes. You know, that was cool or whatever. But the sea cast is like, yo, that's me. I've been a daylight head. I, I talk about all the time about love public enemy. Public yes. Enemy is one of my faves, but what? my Wu Tang, love them. That is what? one of my faves. But De La is literally my spirit animal <laughs> as far as hip hop <laughs> goes, man. I remember being that doggone 12 year old. Yeah, I showed my age. So what? <laughs> being that doggone 12 year old sitting mm-hmm. up in Harlem watching these cats that wasn't from, let's go there for how alternative they were. They weren't from Queens. They weren't from Brooklyn. They weren't from the Bronx. They weren't from Harlem. They was from Long Island. And nowadays, that ain't nothing. But back then, it was like, these cats from where? Where is that? You know, how far is that from New York City? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) and New Yorkers was treating them cats like, from where? Yeah. um, And it's like, yo, that was, yeah, that's my cats, man. Go ahead, yours, man. Watching the video, like you said, I was junior high, maybe-ish, for the most part. Uh, but I saw the video for potholes in my lawn. Yeah, and I couldn't get over that fucking beat. And I was just like, "What the fuck are they talking about?" But it's dope as hell. It was something like you said because you heard you. We coming off the backs of Biz Markey, Public Enemy, Big Daddy Kane, that kind of style. And then you hear the nee, 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 nee. And I was like, "What is that?" And you know, potholes in my lawn. I was like, these cats are dope. And what's and then, crazy about 
And what's uh-uh. crazy about potholes, um, the video looked like they were shooting in Ohio. Man. Off top. And yes. then right behind me, <laughs> myself, and I, the potholes joint kicked in. I had heard the joint before because one of the homies up the street was always one for having a new tape when it came out. Yeah, gotcha. I said tape. tape. I said tape. <laughs> right. He was the one for having a new tape. He was... I was happy that I was able to grab full albums. That was the dude that was splurging on singles. Gotcha. Like, you know what I'm saying, when they was coming. So I heard the joint, but I didn't know what was up with it. So to see, like I said, my first experience was seeing me, myself, and I, and okay. then getting the Potholes video right behind it, because it was like a little micro celebration of them. And dog, that was... album. <laughs> <laughs> Timeless. It was it was timeless, man. It was to me ahead of its time. And again, just actually being able to see yourself in that aspect of hip hop. We watched hip hop, but actually see yourself in it and identify as, hey man, shit, that's me. I like those dudes, man. And, you know, mm-hmm. no fucking gold chains. They had like one outfit for the whole damn video. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like moms and them hooked them up. Like, y'all going out shooting your little video today? Okay, let me put some creases in your pants. You know, and yeah. that was it. You know, that I we related to that shit, man. You know, cats clowning you for you know wanting to crack open a book, you know, or hell, just going to school. Shit. But let's um, let's go there on several things that um Dela said this when they dropped um the first um the first um artificial intelligence um series in their albums. They talked about they were the first to do a whole lot and going back to flowers one of the first acts to do a remix mm. where you going with um it was the second album with the buddy remix but the i know had the remixes on it and all that stuff with cats wasn't really remixing like that they were just dropping new songs shout out to prince paul go ahead yeah. shout out to prince paul for real but because of Prince Paul and their funny nature too, but because of Prince Paul, one of the first acts to actually put skits on their albums. That 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 was, was that's groundbreaking. But yeah, go ahead. Yes. Um, it was like you know, Puffy came up with that album talking about he invented the remix. No, Daylight no, did. Uh, no, Daylight De- invented the remix. Yeah. And also on top of that, like I said, skits on albums, that wasn't happening. At be all. A, be an extra funny, but not being a comedy rap act, mm-hmm. that was them. Because you had a couple cast that were com- like Biz. Biz was funny, was silly or whatever. Right. But Biz was still more so, he was the clown prince of rap. For right. cats that was serious about what their craft was, but at the same time brought the humor in. Mm-hmm. That was a classically a daylock thing, and also talk about cats bringing their protest to the forefront, being the fact that they were protesting against being every other style of rapper going with the Daisy Age. Like they said, if at that time, if they realized how much they would have gotten categorized as hippies, they probably wouldn't have been on the hippie vibe, right? But one showing that peace and daisy age right there showing that you didn't have to be the ultra hardcore cat one i thank run dmc for bringing hardcore to rap bringing that street aesthetic to rap right because lord knows we didn't all need to be wearing fishnet shirts and like spike <laughs> spike studded gloves yeah it was and a like transition. multiple belts you know what i'm saying or yeah. feral robes all the time you yes. know, thank you, Run DMC, for bringing real clothes back to it. But I do appreciate De La for whether it was the dashikis, the medallions, the braids, and everything else in their manner, bringing that alternative lifestyle of, like I said, bookworm cats. I don't know if you got an arrested development without De La being there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you got, um, yeah, poor righteous teachers existed. But I don't know if PRT could exist on that level if you didn't get a day lie first that broke through. Right. And because, I mean, Cass was doing the knowledge in their records, but it was subversive. It was still, you know, Rakim and Kane was both doing the knowledge on their records, but they still look like, you know what I'm saying, the Supreme team. <laughs> it was both <laughs> smooth they, operator. Yeah, man. Still player. Still player, yeah. but I'm going to put something in your ear as well after that. 
you know exactly but to be straight up and down the cast is up there passing you the pamphlets talking about you doing today's mathematics to look <laughs> like that right and to do right. that you need to deal out there first so this yeah. album was so groundbreaking it's so crazy man 35 and years old man 35, 35 years. years and oh the one thing that it keeps bringing me, making me mad about is, and where I say your protests, going back to what we were talking about before, record labels go and stand behind South by Southwest. And you look at the predatory nature of record labels and the fact that we can only truly celebrate this album 35 years later because of how oppressive their deal was. Oh my God. And, and Dave didn't get to be here to see all of it in his greatest fruition. Mm -hmm. that sucks very much so that's so. so you talk about who you need to be screaming out on scream out on these record labels up there just literally putting cats in slave contracts man holding them hostage for life not letting them get any of this benefits of this new era of, of music uh screaming yeah. you know they just got their rights mm -hmm. just and it's like you know, one of them had to pass on for them, you know, not after the fact they won, you know, I, I guess he was around uh, just right before it all. Yeah. Got, you know, got all like literally the ink wasn't dry and then he passed. <laughs> yes. You know, that part. But it's just like you said, the mis misplaced anger, you know, this whole South by Southwest thing. Y'all should have been doing that with the labels on the backs of uh, three feet high and rising, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's but yeah incredibly impactful album like it's i the catalog is so much is it's so much a conglomerate to me mm -hmm. and i kind of start blending stuff now it's going it's making me go in now it's like okay what was just on that album like i said we know I know was on there, the magic number. First of all, unfortunately, one thing that came out of these two albums was the fact that it changed how we were able to sample because mm. of, unfortunately, what happened with the, uh, with, um, it wasn't the magic number. The magic number is the Johnny Cash and the James Brown samples. Um, it was the turtle sample that, that got them and ate everything up. But I mean, I take that back. They, they did invent it. Buddy is off of this album. That's not off the second oh, album. Buddy is off of this that, album. Dog. Okay. Okay. All right. So one of so outside of um outside of um whatchamacallit, outside of um the symphony bringing posse cuts and crew cuts up yeah. there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, and it dog. We, we don't have that no more. No, not like that, oh man. Oh my you god! Get... I mean, that's a whole nother conversation. We gonna, I'm definitely gonna put that on the list, man. We are gonna talk about the best collab. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole crew yeah. collab. Which ones? How you rank them? Yeah, I mean, let me, yeah, let me put that together. Yeah, but yeah, okay. you got you got Buddy on here, and Buddy on the album only had Jungle Brothers and Tip. Then you add Mo and Latifah on it on the remix. remix. Like you said, yeah. potholes, say no go with the hollow note sample, man. Oh my um, god. Dog, I know, like I said oh. before, Jennifer taught me, man. Um, <laughs> can you keep a secret? <laughs> the three is the magic number. I mean, dog, plug tuning when they man. first introduced the plugs. plug. <laughs> Come on, man. First of all, cats up there having five thousand aliases, man. <laughs> I wonder I where mean, I get it from. <laughs> I wonder Cass where I get it from. Yeah. Cats have a 5,000 aliases, man. I mean, they did so much mm -hmm. and, and never had a sophomore slump. That's the, that's what the crazy part about it was. And never had the stunt. You know, the, yeah. the, the numbers did what they did and they are a, they have a cult following. You know, they could do whatever the hell they want till this day. Yeah. You know, till this day. So, Shout out to De La Man, 35 years. Oh, I love it. I love it, it man. It's we, crazy, man. It's, we definitely got to dig deeper into the, you started something with the with the posse cuts. So yeah, definitely going to bring that back and uh, get into it. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to holler ill with these with that one. I got to holler at Big Wit, man. Got you. With, with, the only person, uh, 
outside of, you know, the major DJs in the area, shout out O Money, shout out Dirty D, you know, and the like, um, you know, Ross the Boss, everybody, you know, outside of the major DJs, Wit was the only cat that I knew that was digging in heavy to the point of, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to confer with him yeah. and break it out because he'll break one out. It's like, man, I forgot about that one. <laughs> and I'm not. Like, cause I got some aces up my sleeve that I had you up there like, yo, <laughs> but you know, right. you got, you got groups that came out that were doing stuff. And like I said, the juice, the whole juice crew thing mm -hmm. was one thing, but it was kind of a one-off and then yeah. you had your self-destruction and all in the same game, mm -hmm. but they allowed to go and literally establish what females. Yeah. yeah. Est but establish what, um, Come on, what's the name of the crew? Um, because I'm I don't want to go with soul queries like native tongues. Yeah. Um, the birth of the native tongues happened on the Daylight Project. Yep. Tribe was there first, but native tongues didn't happen right till, until until Funny. then. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. yeah. This has been <laughs> it's been a wild ride, man. I know we are not doing enough justice, and we could definitely dig into it deeper. Right. But um haha ha, plugged another show right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um yeah, we we definitely could that album alone is so monumental mm -hmm. that albums like that is just like having the anniversary of like straight out of Compton. Cause yeah, you For had some, NWA yeah. in the posse, you had yeah. NWA in the posse, but straight out of Compton, okay. what it meant to gangster rap mm -hmm. and what that was like we're here yeah you had ice tea and everybody else before that's what de La was to establishing yes. what everybody did with this album mm -hmm. so yeah absolutely nuts love it and yeah i'm probably going to be banging that tonight at work man <laughs> i'm probably going to be yes, banging sir. that tonight at work man yes that's, sir. that's that action anything else you want to shout out anything uh -huh. else you want to say just uh, get down in the comments let us know what you think about uh i what, what do you think about where, where first of all where were you in if you're old enough, <laughs> where were you when this album dropped? And what was your favorite cut? Get down in the comments and let us know. Like, share, and subscribe, and uh, check us out. And actually, one dope thing I want to throw back to that they did on a skit to an album. Um, they started out an album like, yo, when I first heard Criminal Minded on mm -hmm. a later album, and they had everybody going throughout, like, talking about where they were when they did that. But when they ended the album, and it was so fucking poetic, when I first heard Three Feet High and Rising. See? Yeah. See? And we had to we had to take that trip down memory lane. Like I mm -hmm. didn't even get to hear it on native soil. I got to hear the part the output from the album. I had to be in New York to hear it. See? And yeah, that was amazing, man. Thank y'all for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thank y'all for commenting. Shout out to all the regular listeners. Shout out to any new listeners coming in. We'll be back at you again. Support every show in the Schwabel Room. Support all the people. We thank y'all. We love y'all. We out. And I'm going to roll that beautiful bean footage right now, y'all. Peace. Peace.